Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on the channel and today we're back in at Java and we're going to be doing something called typecasting. So typecasting is essentially when one primitive data type is essentially converted to another primitive data type. So let's say for example I had the decimal 3.56 which is a double. I wanted to convert that to an integer and what that's going to do is that that's just going to print three since um three is the number keep in mind that there is no rounding up or rounding down um java will just pretty much take whatever number it is so if it's 3.56 um it won't round to four um i already have it right here it won't round to four it will just take the three i hope that kind of makes sense so that's pretty much what we're doing in this video it's a pretty short video about something called typecasting so um, I was mentioning about the primitive data types. There are eight primitive data types in Java. However, seven of them work with typecasting. The, um, the uh, one exception is Boolean and Boolean will only store true and false values. So there are seven data types that work with typecasting. So the first one is a byte. The byte is the simplest out of all of them. Um, it's data stored in eight binary digits and are operated as units. So these eight binary digits are operated as units. So that's what a byte is. It's just eight binary digits that are operated together. And then after that, you have a short. Short is a data type where um, values can be stored in 16-bit integers. Um, it's the same as long, um, but um, because there's a range, um, I'll have the range on the screen, hopefully, if I can, if I can grab it. But there's a range for it, and the number you put for short, it must fall in that range. Next, you have something called char. Um, what this is going to do is that it's a 16-bit primitive data type. It stores only one letter, uppercase or lowercase. And then there's int, which is an integer. It can store whole numbers, positive or negative, and it can also assign variables to it. Into the integer can also assign variables. And then after that, we have the long. Um, the long data type can store a 64-bit integer. It's essentially a short, but it can store more values. Um, there's a range for this one as well of what numbers can fit in that limit. It's, a, it's like two to the power of 64, something like that. It's like a big number in the millions, billions. I'll have it on the screen as well if I can find it. If not, I'll probably put it in the comments down below. So, and then after that, we have float and then double. Um, I don't recommend using float um, because double is more precise and everything. A lot of y'all probably might know what float and double are because um, they're one of the most commonly used in Java. I mean, double especially is most commonly used in Java. But float essentially stores 32-bit decimal values. It can't exceed seven values over the decimal. So for example, let's say we had a big um, number and there were like 10 digits after the decimal. It will, um, if you put a float data type, it will only, it will stop after the seventh number after the decimal. And then double will do the same thing. Um, it, it stores 64 bit decimal values. It cannot exceed 16 digits after the decimal point. If it does exceed, then the decimals, then the um, numbers after the decimal point will, will stop when it hits the 16th digit after. So you only count the digits after the decimal point. If it exceeds 16, then it will stop at the 16. And then for float, if it exceeds 7, it will stop at 7. But I just recommend to use double because float is just, it's not worth it because double is just more precise. I guess you could say. So now that we know the seven primitive data types that work with typecasting, um, there are two different types of how we can do typecasting. The first way is called is through something called widening casting. Widening casting is done automatically, and it converts a smaller data type to a bigger one. Keep in mind that the order starts from byte and it ends in double. That byte is the smallest and double is the biggest data type. Um, by biggest, I mean it stores the most values. So byte does not store much values. It's 8-bit, and then double is 64-bit, and it can um, store many values. So that's what I mean by big and small. Small cannot store many values. Big can. So, and then narrowing casting is just the opposite, and it's done manually. So it converts a larger data type to a smaller one, starting in double and ending in byte. 
if you um if you use narrowing casting but you convert a smaller one to a bigger one then you're probably going to get an error because narrowing casting cannot do that it can only con it can only convert um data types manually through a larger data type to a smaller one okay so let's go ahead and get started with our java code okay so now that you know what type casting is and we know a little bit about it let's go ahead and get started with widening casting and narrowing casting so i'm going to be demonstrating an example for both and hopefully you'll be able to understand it before we do that make sure your file is set up so first um you have your your class name so your class name should match your file name after that you should have your main your main header i like to call this my main header public essentially means that the, this code can be changed globally. It can be changed anywhere. Anything will be able to access to it. Um, you'll learn more about public and all the access modifiers in modifiers. Um, you'll learn more about public and access modifiers in that lesson, which will come soon in the future. And then next, static. Static is um, it's also something you'll learn. I'm not going to go into it right now. And then void essentially means that it doesn't have a return value. So um, usually um, this is where your data type goes um, and we input these data types. It'll be used more often when, when there's a video on methods, which should also come out soon as well. So, um, but as of now, we're, I'm just gonna keep, we're just gonna keep doing void because void doesn't have a return value and it allows us to put system.out.println stuff. And then after that, we have our main. Our main, whatever's inside main is what's gonna execute into the terminal or the console and then you have string args this is a parameter this is also something that is um that we're going to talk about in methods which will come in the future okay so with that being said now with the file set up let's go ahead and get started so first is widening casting which is done automatically by converting a smaller data type to a bigger one starting in byte and ending in double so what that essentially means is that you can choose any two primitive data types as long as it's converting a smaller one to a bigger one because that's what widening casting does so um, i'm going to do short and double it doesn't matter which one you do as long as your first one is smaller than your second one my um for me short is smaller than double so that's why it's good to include short first so we're going to include our first primitive data type which should always be smaller than your second one so after that I'm going to say my short. So this right here is the name of our primitive data type. So our the name of our data type is short. After this, you have the name of your data of your um, data type. In this case, I just named it my short. After that, we then have to set it to a value. I'm going to set it to nine. And then from there, we can make our second data type. I'm going to make mine double. And then I'm going to make the name for it, which is my double. I like to do it my short, my double, because this is what you're going to get get into when you start methods. Um, typically, methods are named like this. Um, so with my, and then it just has a capitalized. It's a common programming technique, and it's good to get into the habit of doing it. Um, also, keep in mind that the value you put, it must match that data type. So if I put 9.78 on your short, that's going to be an error because short can't store decimal values. Only double and float can. So I'm going to do 9.78 for double because double can store decimals. Or I can just, let me just go ahead and it equals my short. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, we're not going to put a value for double as of now. I'm just going to make double equals short because that's essentially what I'm trying to do. So um, what's going to happen is that it's going to print 9.0 instead of 9 because double will store a decimal point. So if there isn't a decimal point, then it's it, if there isn't a decimal point, so if it's just a clean out whole number, then what double is going to do is that it's just going to print out a point zero after it. So with that being said, um, let's go ahead and add a print statement. You'll see a yellow squiggly line. That just means that it hasn't been um, declared. So let's go ahead and declare it, I guess. So let's go ahead and print that. And let's go ahead and print that. We should be good to go from there, free of errors. 
So what we did here is we used a short data type. We want to convert this to a double data type. This is done automatically. So it should, um, it should automatically convert from a nine to a 9.0. And then we already printed my short, my double. And then here we just, we just said we want to double to equal short. So let's go ahead and print and run this. And from what we see, it's going to say nine and then 9.0. It say it says 9.0 instead of nine because they do equal the same, but double can store a decimal point. So since there is no decimal, um, it just prints out a point zero because point zero is just equivalent to the whole number itself. So that is essentially how widening casting works. Narrowing casting works the same way, except we flip these two because narrowing casting is done manually and it converts a larger data type to a smaller one. So your first one should be larger than your smaller one. I'm gonna make this equal to 9.78. And then from there, I'm gonna say short my short equals, and then in parentheses, I'm gonna say short and then my double. So what we're doing here is that we're essentially converting it manually. I don't think I did that right. Let me go ahead and check back. Let's see what happens if we just go ahead and... Does there have to be like a semicolon or something after that? Yeah, that's why. Okay. So what we did here is we did something called narrowing casting. So we put a larger data type, and then after that, we put a smaller data type. And then what that's gonna do is that's gonna convert um, a double to a short. So the reason why we put the parentheses short right here is because narrowing casting must be done manually, and this is how we do it manually. And then after that, we print double and short. Be sure to flip them, because the first one should always print first, the second one should always print second. And then let's go ahead and print that. And what that's going to do is that's going to print 9.78 and then it's going to print 9. 9 is the short value and then 9.78 is the double value. Double can store decimals, short cannot store decimals. So um, that's pretty much it for this video. Those are the two different ways you can use typecasting, widening casting, narrowing casting. Widening casting is done automatically, um, which is done just by that, my double. It also um, converts a smaller value to a bigger value. So if you do a bigger one to smaller one without this, without adding this manual, without adding um, your data type parentheses, this is how you add it manually. If you don't add this and you convert it from a small to a big a, or a big to a small, then you're going to get an error. Hopefully that should make sense. But if you do it, if you do it the opposite, just keep in mind that widening casting um, converts a smaller data type to a bigger one. If you convert from a bigger to smaller one, it's not going to work. You're going to get an error. Um, same with narrowing casting. Um, it converts a bigger data type to a smaller one. By bigger, I mean that it can hold more values. So um, it, it converts a bigger one to a smaller one. If you do the opposite, you're going to get an error. As simple as that. And then narrowing casting must be done manually by adding um, short in parentheses like that, by adding your data type parentheses. And then widening casting can be done automatically, which you can just get rid of that. And that is pretty much it for this video. Also, another side note is that um, in Java, it won't round up. So your double may be 9.78 or your decimal may be above 0.5. However, it doesn't round. It will just take the number that is before the decimal. And with that being said, that's pretty much it. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe. If you had any questions or anything seemed confusing, be sure to leave them down in the comments below. I'll go ahead and answer them as much as possible. Stay tuned for more Java videos and I'll see you guys next time.